Brett teaches Raspberry Pi. Brett teaches Raspberry Pi. Brett, 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 Brett. Heck is cool. T minus five seconds. Brett teaches Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, stop whatever you have running up here. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and create a new project for the next section here. Uh, so let's uh, close these other ones. We're going to cl click new to start a new one. Okay, so in here we're going to do our normal stuff. We need to import our SenseHat library code. So from SenseHat, import SenseHat with capital S, capital H. Don't forget those. Uh, then we're going to assign our variable. So sense equals SenseHat, capital S, capital H with the two parentheses. Okay, so for now I'm going to just define a single color of red uh, that we're going to use. We might add some more later on, but currently 255 comma 0 comma 0 will get you red. We're going to use that to define our player. So we're going to define our player using a special type of variable that we haven't covered yet, and that's essentially called an object. So in Python, being an object-oriented language, we're going to kind of define this using curly brackets instead of our square brackets that we've used before. So inside of our curly brackets, we're gonna be able to store other variables or multiple variables that, are, that define or make up this object. So you're gonna see this, we're gonna start with our curly bracket, we're gonna find individual variables inside of it, and then the combination of those actually make up the player, everything that defines the player. So the first thing we do, we'll make a player variable, and then we're gonna set it equal to our curly bracket, and remember. We're gonna enter here to go to the next line. Notice we're indented. Inside quotation marks, we're going to define our variable name now. So x in this case is a variable inside of player. We're going to set a colon there and then our number is 4. The value of 4 is stored in the variable called x and it all belongs to player. And we're also going to do a y here, set it also to 4. Uh, and these are going to be the location of the player. So in a 4x4 four four spot will be about in the middle. Make sure you end with a curly bracket there to end your player. So the X and Y coordinates essentially belong to that player. They're the object that defines the player. When we duplicate ourselves a lot and write the same code over and over, uh, the way we solve this usually is to place that repeated code inside a function uh, code block it's, and simply call that function whenever we want to execute the same block of code. So think of a function as just like uh, some external section of code that we can call and call as many times as we want, repeat that code over and over, and not to duplicate write it. So we've written it once, we can use it many times. It's essentially what we are doing in our libraries we've imported. Anytime we were calling uh, any function on our sense hat, it's code that somebody else wrote, but we can call it many times and execute it without having to write all the code inside of it. So uh, we're just calling other developers functions in that section, but here we're writing, you're gonna write our own function in our own code. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna start with the word DEF for define, which means define a function. This one we're gonna call it update underscore screen. And then we're gonna put our two parentheses here to define that that's the, the function and then the semicolon or the colon there, sorry. Uh, then we're gonna enter. So this all this code indented here is part of this uh, function. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say sense.clear. So we're gonna clear the RGB LED screen. Okay, then we're gonna call sense.pixel because we're gonna set where the current player is, pixel, using that player object above. So we're gonna say player, and then we're going to grab a specific variable on that player using square brackets this time with quotation marks, x, quotation marks, square bracket, comma, player, square bracket, quotation y, quotation, square bracket, comma, r for red. So we're gonna say set the pixel at that spot, red. Okay, so if you notice here on set pixel, we're calling the player object here. And remember, set pixel takes in an X and a Y coordinate. So where we're getting our X and Y coordinate is from the player object, object above. So when I say player square bracket X in quotation marks, I'm saying go, in, go up to that player object at, on line seven, find its X variable that's stored inside of it and give me the value of it. So in this case, it'll place four in the first spot there of that set pixel function call. And then in the second one, it's gonna go up and say, give me the Y, and that one's also set to four. So technically we're passing four comma four to this method because it's going up and grabbing uh, the variables from the player and sending them right here into this function. 
Uh, one thing to note is that functions are not called automatically when the program runs. They're only called when some other lines of code call into them. So we can find these functions all over. They can have code in them, but they will not be executed until someone calls them. So since we're going to update our screen with our current player's position, we have to make sure to actually call this function right from the main code lines in order to have it actually update the player's location. So we're going to go ahead and do that next. All right, so let's uh, enter down to the next line here and make sure we call our update screen function so that when the normal process of code runs, it actually calls that function we just defined. So update underscore screen with the two parentheses. So that will call that function. So as the code goes down, we're going to set up here. We're going to define our red color, okay? And then we're going to define and set up our player at pixels 4.4. And then we're going to clear the screen as the first thing inside the update screen function down here. So we're gonna make sure to clear the screen out. Then we're gonna draw the player at that 4-4 position using the red color we defined above. And then that player's pixel will be drawn on the screen. So every time we call update screen, it's gonna be updated. So now we need to create a, like an endless loop, essentially, it'll keep drawing this player. So make sure you do your little while and then capital T for true with a colon there. Okay, and then we're gonna do a few things in here. Uh, on the sense out, there's a little tiny joystick and we're gonna receive some input from it. Uh, it has events that happen whenever the joystick's pushed in either direction. So uh, we're gonna write this little code here. It's called for event in sense.stick.get underscore events, parenthesis, parenthesis, colon. So for every event that occurs on that joystick, uh, we're going to do something with those events. So this is going to loop every time an event happens, this for, for event thing will capture it and we can do something with it. Okay, so what we're going to do is, first of all, we can uh, just print out the event that happens. So we're going to call our print, which is going to print at that lower section down there. We're going to print the event dot direction. So this is a uh, object here, so event has a direction, and event has the action that happens. So we're going to print those out to that little white area down there. Uh, so it'll print it out, and then when you press the joystick in any direction, an event action occurs, saying that the joystick has been pressed, and then there's an event direction that is assigned, so we'll know if it went left, right, up, or down, etc. So we're going to use if statements to check the conditions of the joystick to see what we want to do with it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put one of those if statements in right here. So we're basically gonna say, if the joystick was pressed in a certain direction, do something. Okay, so let's go ahead and type an if statement. And then we're gonna say if event dot, let's see, let me type event dot action. And then remember we're doing a double equals here because we're comparing, does that action equal pressed in quotation marks, single quotes here. And so we're gonna compare two things. We wanna see if the button was pressed and if the event dot direction was right. So did the, was the joystick pressed and did they push right is the two things we're checking there. And we'll put a little colon there at the end. If that occurred, then we're gonna do something with it. Okay, and the thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we wanna move the player one pixel to the right. So using that player object above. So we're gonna say player bracket, square bracket, quotation X quotation, which says grab their X property and set it equal to, and we're gonna say plus equal one right now. So take whatever it currently is, add one to it, and then reassign it. So now uh, if player was able to move to the right or did move to the right, they would from four now would be changed to five, so player's X would be five. So uh, we got that captured for the right. Uh, we wanna also make sure we call that update screen function so that it actually redraws the player. Remember that clears the screen and then redraws the player in their current location. And since we just updated the player one pixel to the right, it should draw them in the next section. So let's add the next one here. If event.action was pressed and event dot direction equals left and then do the little colon and our next line here we're going to move the player to the left so we're going to say player oop, player square bracket quotation x 
Okay, we're modifying the same x property variable. We're gonna set that minus equals one. So we're gonna subtract one this time. So instead of a plus equals, we're using a minus equals. That'll just subtract one from it. Okay, and then make sure to update our screen because our player just moved. So we're gonna update screen. Okay, so we got them moving left and right. We're gonna go ahead and repeat these two steps for our down and up. So since they're pretty much the same, we can just copy and paste these, uh, what is it, six lines of code. And so control C for copy, control V for paste. Okay, and so we paste it and make sure we go through and update these. Uh, we still want the press, but this part we're gonna do is down. So we're gonna change this to down. So if they push it down on the joystick, now we're messing with the Y coordinate. So make sure to change these to the Y coordinate. And we are moving plus one if they move down, because remember it starts zero at the top and it's seven at the bottom. And then if they press up down here, we wanna increment the Y coordinate. Uh, we wanna decrement it, sorry, Y minus equals one. And that should move the player up, down, left, and right. So let's go ahead and test this out and try it on the joystick and see how it goes. Make sure you save it first. Uh, we're going to call it move.py, remember py for Python, and run it. Let's see what it does. All right, so now we get to do the fun part, right? Absolutely. So we have our player in there. We were able to move them. Let's go ahead and run it and test it out. We're going to run him with this adorable little joystick. There you go. So You're moving cool. your player around. So one thing we have to be careful with, uh, currently we don't have any logic in there to stop us from going outside the matrix. If you do, it would cause a crash. Uh, so we're gonna hit fix that in the next section here, but currently we've got a player moving around. Let's go throw in some boundaries. What yeah. do you say? Let's set some boundaries. <laughs>